Uh, hi everyone, I'm making this video about how to make a sofa bed. Um, this is the sofa bed that I made and I'll just pull it out so you can see it a bit more clearly. In this video I'm going to show you how to make it's um, a sofa bed and I, um, I'm going to show you how I made it. It's fairly simple. Uh, I, okay, so first I, I, I'm not asking anyone to like the video or subscribe to the channel. I'm doing this um, just because I can't stand it when people throw away um, sofas. I'm not selling anything. I, I'm not interested in making any money out of this. I did this because I can't stand it when people work hard to earn money to buy a sofa and then five years later it goes into a landfill site. And so if you look at the sofas designed by, say, Ikea, they're good. They're really good. But if one little thing breaks, if 10% of it is broken, then the whole thing inevitably ends up in a landfill site. Whereas with this sofa, that I've designed it so that it's totally, um, every single item here, every single element is reusable, recyclable, repairable and replaceable. And I call it the rude sofa bed because it can be made with rudimentary skills, rudimentary tools and rudimentary materials. And so companies like um, Ikea or Futon Company, they make really good products, they're great. But the worry about them is that if one thing breaks, then it's only a matter of time before the whole thing ends up in a landfill site. And so the good thing about this is if any item, every part of it breaks, it's easy to fix. Nothing is going to break because everything is just single elements. That are, um, you know, they're just very, very dumb, very crude. And so it's just a very basic thing that I designed so it'd look at home in. It, it wouldn't really work in an office foyer, but it'd work in a coffee shop, poor person's house, rich person's house. I just wanted to do a very simple thing, um, chuck a throw over it. It will last you forever. It, it will last you for the rest of your life because if there's any part of it that breaks, you could just substitute in another part for zero cost. The foam cushions, the, the foam's never going to break. The, the cushion covers, well, you can repair a cushion cover if you like. You can get new covers for the same thing. It's not like something like this, which is a bit where you see this, the foam is attached to the structure. And so to change any part of this, you've got to rework the whole shebang. Whereas with this, every single item is, can be separated and dealt with separately by anyone with no skills. Right, so every single element of this is rectangular. So to make this, all you need is a saw, a screwdriver, and a drill, basically. So this is rectangular, that's rectangular. Every single item is rectangular. All you need to do is be able to cut a, a 90 degree of right angle cut on a bit of wood. So every single item, if it breaks, it can be replaced or substituted, no problem. So there's a bit of foam in here, that's never gonna break. The foam's never gonna break. Um, every bit of wood here, if that breaks, I can just get another bit of wood for a couple of pounds and put it in. It costs nothing. Uh, caster wheels are never going to break. The joists, they're never going to break. What's going to go wrong with it? And this just stick at the side, well, there's nothing to it. If it breaks, it's just a rectangle of wood with some holes drilled in. It's very simple. And then if you look at these, I'll just rotate it round. If you look at these, the brackets for the back mechanism, they're never going to break at all because there's just one part to it. It's just a, a bracket that just rests on a screw. There's nothing to it. Okay, so here it is as a basic structure. You've got caster wheels at the bottom. Then you've got a joist. This is the primary structure and everything fixes to the joist. Then you've got these slats that go on top of the joist that go underneath the mattress. And then on the sides of the joist, I turn it around. It's all on caster, so it all just rolls around. Here you've got these sticks at the side that they go up and they fix to what well, is basically planks of wood that are painted black. Okay. Here at the back of the sofa, this is obviously the back of the sofa. And so this is like the backrest. And what you see, I've got these elements here that will never ever break. They're, they're basically, you get these from a company called Haffley, H-A-F-E-L-E, and they're brackets that will never break. And so these are the brackets that hold the back in place. Okay, so here it is in bed mode. You see, I flipped it around. So now the back bit is right at the corner of the armrest on the side. It's right at the corner. Okay, I just take it and flipped it over. Now I'm going to try and do this whilst holding the iPad in one hand and doing this one handed. So it's going to look like a flurry of confusion, but it would obviously be much easier if I did it with two hands. So now I'm going to lift this up like this, just lift it out of position, doing this one handed, remember. And now I put it back down. And then there's that one goes there, and that one goes there. 
and so you imagine with normally with a sofa bed doing this is uh, there there you see just one-handed I've just flipped it around so this backrest is um, symmetrical you can flip it upside down so there it's in the backrest position for the couch so now you'd use it as a couch and now I'm going to flip it back around again so how it would be for a bed so I lift it up so now you can use it as a bed so now there is our bed you see now so what do I do with this I don't want to just leave this lying on the floor someone could trip over it and so I flip it around like that I'm doing this one-handed remember and so I put that there and I put this side there there so one-handed and so now now it's a in bed mode but I've got the back and I've put it over there to the one side so it doesn't take up the bed space okay okay so here are the caster wheels now it's important with the caster wheels that you get a rectangular fixing plate so it fixes onto the underside of the joist nice and neat you, lots of caster wheels have square fixing plates in which case they'll just out the side there'll be nothing to screw into so you see this fixing plate is rectangular it's not square and I've screwed in at angles so the screw goes into the meat of the wood I don't just screw vertically up because then the wood would split so you screw in vertically so the screw really bites into the wood okay so the standard height that this should be above the finished floor level is 42 centimeters and so first of all you've got to buy your caster wheel and then you've got to buy your mattress I would say get a thin firm mattress right don't get a big deep one because the top of that has to be 42 centimeters above the ground so once you've got your caster wheels and once you've got your mattress then you can calculate the size of your joist because you know that these slats have to be 16 to 18 millimeters thick I'd say make, make it 18 millimeters just to be on the safe side but once you've got your caster wheels and your mattress then that will tell you whether you're going to get a four five or six inch joist as your primary structure the joists are cheap mattresses are expensive so get a, a, a thin mattress that's firm this is 150 millimeters six inches and the deeper this joist is the stronger it is because the further apart these fixings are the stronger the sticks will be at the side you don't want these two fixings to be too close together or that will make it weaker and so a nice deep joist is good and a thin mattress to compensate but the top of that should be 42 centimeters above finished floor level and if you're not sure about the height then what you do is this see if I can show you right if you're not sure look at your foot measure from the foot to the inside part of your knee and that's what the level that you want that the top of the mattress to be you don't want you want to be able to put your feet on the floor without the mattress pushing under your leg at all because that's bad for your circulation so if in doubt I say 42 centimeters but I don't know how tall you are how long your legs are but you're going to want the top of the mattress to be the same distance about as from the, the bottom of your heel to the inside part of your knee there okay now we with these joists what you've got to do is you can get these in say I would say get them in 2.1 meter lengths which is seven foot and then you strike a line down the center of the joist so what you strike a line down the center of the joist and that will give you your setting out don't do don't work from one side to the other strike a line down the center and set out from the center of the joist right the crucial thing with this is that every single element if it breaks it can easily be replaced or repaired you don't need to pay an upholsterer because upholstery is a skillful job and if there is an upholsterer and you need to get like say that chair we had to get it upholstered it cost us more than the chair's worth to do it but with this this mattress is a standard single mattress and in the UK that is 190 centimeters in length by 90 centimeters in width so it's a standard mattress size so if ever you want to replace the mattress you can just buy a new um, standard size single mattress substitute it in and you still keep the rest of the, the sofa so the whole thing can last forever okay so the sizes of the components I've already said that the the wheels it depends what ones you buy obviously you have to make adjustments if the caster wheels you buy are, are bigger or smaller but these ones are 100 mil high which I think works well now um, so the depth of the joist is also going to be determined by the thickness of the mattress here I've got what I'm showing here is 
a six inch thrust that's been planed right so that's uh, 140 millimeters and it's by uh, 45 millimeters width so it's like two inch thick now these up here these planks these are just standard planks of wood and these are seven and a half inches deep which is 190 millimeters the sticks at the side I've really taken a chance and done them thin and they seem absolutely fine but if you want you can always beef them up have them as two by twos but these ones I've got that's 24 millimeters which is an inch that way by 30 millimeters which is an inch and a quarter that way so that's an inch and a quarter and that's an inch okay and with these buy them um, get four that are 600 long and then just lop off the excess so just make them sort of too long and then lop off the excess at the end right and so these planks of wood obviously because this is this is a standard single mattress that you get in the uk where you're making it maybe your standard mattress sizes are different sizes so what i'm saying you might have to adjust for if the the standard single mattress in your country is a different size but because the mattress is 190 in length by 90 in width that means that all the other dimensions are generated by that and so with this how long is that bit of wood for the armrest well it, it's 90 centimeters because that's the width of the mattress all these slats of wood underneath how how long are they so well they're all 900 as well because that's the width of the mattress now when it comes to the cushions around the side um, there's only one dimension you have to calculate for yourself you know all of these cushions are the same size right they're all interchangeable and so I take this cushion off the length of all the cushions are the same it's the length from the back of the backrest to the front of the armrest so that's the length of all of the cushions the height of the cushions is up to you make them taller if you want but I've got them at nine and a half inches 240 millimeters right now once you know those two dimensions you're going to do a bit of calculation and you increase or decrease the width until you've got a size where all four will fit like that now the width that I've got on this is is six inches but obviously you might have a different size single mattress in your country so make sure that ordering this foam is the last thing that you procure right because um, you might have to make adjustments once you've all made it and you've got all the pieces in place you don't want to buy the foam and then find it doesn't fit so get everything else in place first so you buy the caster wheels and the mattress then you buy the wood once you've put it all together then you calculate the size of the cushions okay now when you buy the foam for the cushions say to the person that it's got to be for furniture so because you need flame retardant foam don't get um don't just buy cheap foam that will catch fire um, just say it's a furniture and they'll send you um, flame retardant foam uh, and also get the foam that's firm just go for the firm foam rather than the, the the soft squishy stuff okay one thing if i was going to do this again i would beef up these slats a bit these slats are half an inch so they're 13 millimeters in depth and in length they're about 95 and i've got a 50 mil gap between that gap is a little bit big because if you get a mattress that's quite soft it would be a problem so maybe have a gap between have an extra slat so you've got a gap here that's only 40 mil 13 mil depth for the slats that's maybe a bit under engineered um i maybe have these 16 mil deep i'd recommend something like that that was that's i mean i got it nearly right with this my mark one but um if i was going to make a mark two i'd have this slats about 16 mil deep and i'd have the space between them about 40 mil okay so regarding setting out we've already said we're gonna get a seven foot 2.1 meter long joist and mark the center line of that and set out from that so we know that that mattress there the standard size of a single mattress in the uk is 190 centimeters long so from that center line there we go across 95 centimeters and that will give us the inner face of that stick because we know that half of 190 centimeters is 95 centimeters so that gives us a setting out dimension to the face of that stick then give it a little bit of space before the first slat there it doesn't have to go right up against and then just equally space the slats now these slats i have them projecting i have them cantilevering across it's safe to do that to a certain extent i've got it about four and a half inches they're cantilevering off don't make that cantilever so 
long that if a big person stands on the end, it could snap. Um, it's safe to have that cantilever about four inches, four and a half inches. Now, um, obviously, this um, make this you, when you get a 2.1 meter joist, it will be too long, so you're going to lop off the end. But don't cut it so short that the end of the grain is too near these fixings. Okay, you don't want those fixings to be too near the end of the bit of wood. Similarly, with these sticks here, just get um, uh, if they if you cut them all so they're 600 long and then just lop off the excess you don't need. It's nice to have a bit at the top because you sort of rest your palm on it when you're sitting. So it's a nice little sort of hand rest. And you don't want the end of that grain to be too close to the fixing or else it won't have enough wood for this fixing to work. And so um, apart from that, when it comes to the backrest, I'll take this off now. I'm just doing this one handed. So, now these brackets, the Haffley brackets, they have bolted them on because you've got to get them quite close to the end of the wood. So you don't want to use a screw that will put a strain on the inside of the wood. So I've bolted that so it clamps the wood together rather than having a screw that would grip from the inside. And so these are bolted on and obviously you've got to offer it up so the face of this, this corner, is on the corner of that. And that will tell you where these two screws will have to be. Once you get those two screws, the whole thing will latch onto that and you just flip it over for the, the, um, the, the sofa position. Uh, with this backrest bit of wood, measure it and measure it again to make sure you get it just right. You're doing it so tight it's difficult to get in and out, but at the same time you want it at a maximum length so that these bolts have got plenty of wood to, to clamp onto. You don't want them to be too near the end of the grain. Okay, obviously cut it too long and then if it's too long you can saw off a bit, saw off a bit until it's the right length. But whatever you do, don't cut that too short or else you'll have to go and buy another bit of wood. Also, the, the whole thing fits together like Meccano. So once I've made it all, I disassembled it so it's just a load of rectangular planks and then I painted it all black and then I reassembled because if you put it together and then paint it, the paint goes a bit rubbish at these joints here. So what you do is I you disassemble the whole thing, paint it, let it dry overnight, give it a couple of coats and then bolt it together once all the paint's gone off. Okay, in terms of the aesthetics, this is obviously influenced by Rietveld or Robin Day or Japanese furniture, stuff like that. But um, obviously, but where they make furniture for, you know, a, a Rietveld couch would cost a fortune or Robin Day would cost £2,000. Uh, this cost me like 750 And the thing is, I wanted to make something aesthetically that can work in any situation. Something that is, you know, you could have it in a coffee shop or you could have it in a... A, 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 an upper middle class or lower working class household. I just wanted something where it can be treated really roughly, you can treat it however you like, and if any bit breaks or cracks, it's really simple and cheap to replace it or repair it. So it's never going to end up in a landfill site. It's, it's as tough as old boots, basically. You can treat it however you want. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about the costs. All of the wood and the wheels and the bolts and everything came to about £90. The, there's a mattress in here that cost me £150. The foam um, cushions, they cost me £100 for the foam. And the material cost £100. And the sewing to make all of the cushions, that cost me £300. So in all, if I go through my uh, list, it's wood and bits £90, mattress £150, Foam cushions 100, fabric 100, uh, sewing 300. That was the um, uh, the big cost. So if you can do your own sewing, you could make these for like, you know, 450 pound each and flog them for a grand. And so um, anyway, so all in all, it came to about 750 pounds to make this sofa, and I made it in a few days. Okay, so what would I do differently if I did this again? Well, this is the Mark One, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, uh, if I was going to do it again, I would think about maybe for the material, I might do denim. I might buy denim, wash it so it shrinks, and then make all the covers out of that, because denim really ages quite well. We're used to the idea of denim being a bit faded. And uh, with all of these cushions, obviously, um, one, thing, um, uh, one thing I should have done, I should have got the zip on the side. I forgot to do that. So that way, if I ever get a, a stain or something on the top, you know, if someone puts a wine glass and stains it, then I'd be able to flip it over. But I can't really do that because I've got the zip on the underneath. So that's probably a mistake I made. But I got that right with the mattress. 
with the mattress if you look at this there's a zip on the side at the back so it means that when that bit of fabric wears out I can flip it round and when that wears out then I can flip it around the other way so the mattress the covering for the mattress is going to last for years and years also if I was going to do this again I think one thing I would think about is I would I would think about how to do it so that you could get two of them and put them together to make a double bed. So I would do something whereby there would be some sort of um, um, latch that I could connect from this to the same sofa bed on the other side so I could put them together to make them so that two could butt up to become a double bed. Okay, so there it is, back in place. I think um, if you showed this video to a professional carpenter, it, um, they could knock one of these up, the frame up in like, a day it would just it'd almost be an insult to a professional carpenter to show it to them because it's so basic it's just very very crude uh, that's why i called it the rude sofa bed because you can make it with rudimentary tools and skills and materials uh like any professional carpenter could knock that up with their eyes closed basically there's no mortise and tenon joints there's no dovetail joints nothing like that it's just a a, a, a frame uh, what I'm going to do, there might be things that I've missed out in this uh, video. Rather, I don't want to re-record the video again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add some pictures on the links below. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. I will also um, deal with it on the, the links below for the pictures um, f uh, in my chlorophot slide which is where I keep all my design photographs. And so I hope that's of interest. You can make one. If you've got a, a saw, a drill, and a screwdriver, you, uh, you could make one of these in, well, professional carpenter could make it in a day. You could, if you're an amateur, you can make it in like two days, two and a half days. Um, here you see, down here, um, uh, I've got dome-headed nuts. So you have the long nut come through. You put a normal nut on. Then you hacksaw off the excess, get a proper hacksaw, not a junior hacksaw. And then when you take off the nut, it will smooth down the burrs on the end of the bolt. So then you can screw on the dome-headed nut, no problem. Dome-headed nuts, nuts look much nicer. Okay, and I just, uh, these planks here are just held on with screws. But for this top one, because there's a bit more strain on it, I used a nut on the top one. And it's nice little uh, detail. Okay. So I hope that's of interest. If you have rudimentary carpentry skills, you can make one of these, no problem. Um, so I hope that's of interest. And uh, if you make one of these, it will last you for the rest of your life because uh, there's no part of it that can't be replaced, repaired, reused or recycled. It's just very, very um, basic, basically. And so if you get one of these, you know it's not gonna, well, you, you not you get one, you make one yourself. I'm not gonna make it for you. But um, so basically with this, it's, uh, you know it's never going to end up in a landfill site because it, uh, because there's no part of it that can break basically and also the children love using it as a camp they, they make camps out of these cushions and also they have the, underneath it as like a little sort of hidey hole they like playing around it anyway but I hope that's of interest uh, uh, happy carpentry hope it works well for you and uh, good luck with your project <laughs>